Welcome to the regular meeting of the Board of Trustees of Canton Township. I'd like to call the meeting to order on January 12th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, Clerk Seegers, can you please call roll? All right, Tr uh, Trustee, I'm sorry. Let me get that packet up here. Now I hear it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Trustee Borninski. Here, uh, present in uh, Canton Township. All right, and Trustee Foster. Good evening from Canton Township. Ganguly. Good evening from Canton Township. All right, Graham Hudak. Good evening from Canton Township. Segrist. Good evening from Canton Township. Slavens. Good evening from Canton Township. And Snyderman. I'm here in Canton Township. <laughs> okay, and the agenda first is to go into closed session. So I, I, do I hear a motion to go into closed session? Madam Supervisor, I move that the board go into closed session to discuss the pending litigation in Marinelli v. Canton and Boylan v. Canton. Support. Please call roll clerk Segrist. Right, Borninski. Aye. Foster. Aye. Ganguly. Aye. Madam Hudek. Aye. Uh, Segrist, aye. Slavens. Aye. And Snyderman. Aye. All right, so we have some attendees here and some panelists. Just to let everybody know, we're going to, the board is going to leave this session and go into closed session, and then we will be back at this session when that is over. So we'll meet everybody over in closed session. Do I hear a motion to close the closed session? Madam Supervisor, I move that the board go return from closed session into open session. Support. Thank you. Clerk Seekers, can you please call the roll on the motion? All right. Um, all those in favor of Borninski? Aye. Foster? Aye. Kingsley? Aye. Clem Hudak? Aye. Seacrest? Aye. Slavens? Aye. Snyderman? Aye. Great. Thank you. Motion passes. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the adoption of the agenda. Can I have a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Second. Okay. Thank you, Clerk Seegers. Please call the roll on adoption. Borninski. Aye. Foster. Aye. Ganguly. Aye. Graham Hudak. Aye. Seegers, aye. Slavens. Aye. Snyderman. Aye. Thank you. Motion passes for approval of minutes. Uh, the next item, I'm sorry, for adoption of the agenda. The next item is approval of minutes for December 15th and 22nd. Of 2020. Can I have a motion to approve, please? Madam Supervisor, I move that the board adopt the final uh, minutes that were provided via email yesterday with the modifications to the draft minutes. Support. Mark Speakers, can we please have a roll call on the motion? Provided there's no discussion, right? Yes, any discussion on that? No, thank you. Borninski? Aye. Foster? Aye. Inguli? Aye. Graham Hudek? Aye. Segrist Aye. Slavens? Aye. Snyderman? Aye. Thank you. Motion passes. The next item is public comment. Do we have any public comment? You can raise your hand or you can hit, um, I think it's star nine if you're on a phone. I don't see any phones. I don't see any hands right now. Any public comment? No public comment. Okay, thank you. The next item is payment of the bills. Do I ever hear a motion to pay the bills? Madam Supervisor, I make a motion that we pay the bills. Support. Clark Seegers, can you please take a roll call on paying the bills? All right, Borninski. Aye. Foster. Aye. Ganguly. Aye. Graham Hudak. Aye. Segrist Aye. Slavens. Aye. Snyderman. Aye. The motion passes. Next item on the agenda is the consent calendar. Do I hear a motion to um, 
approve the consent calendar. Madam Supervisor, I move that, that the board adopt the consent calendar as presented with item C1, receive and file the future land use map amendment for Metro Opportunities 1 LLC and Metro Opportunities 10 LLC from Municipal Service Division. Support. Great, thank you. Clerk Segrist, can you please call the roll on approving the consent calendar? Borninski. Aye. Foster. Aye. Ganguly. Aye. Graham Hudak. Aye. Secret Tie Slavens. Aye. Snyderman. Aye. Great. Motion passes. Now we move on to the general calendar. The first item is consider first reading of an amendment to Appendix A, Zoning of the Code of Ordinances regarding the Metro Opportunities 1 LLC and Metro Opportunities 10 LLC rezoning. Can I have a motion for the first item? Aye. Madam Supervisor, allow me one moment. This is, uh, I'll, I'll do this in the form of one motion. I move to introduce and hold the first reading of the proposed amendment to Appendix A, Zoning of the Code of Ordinances of the Charter Township of Canton is provided in the attached ordinance, which rezones the tax parcels listed to light uh, to LI, LIR or light industrial research from R3, R1, and RR, and a further move to table for consideration of the amendment for a second reading to be held on January 26, 2021. Thank you. The applicant proposes to rezone six parcels located north of Michigan Avenue and east of Denton Road to LIR, Light Industrial Research, from R3, R1, and RR. However, for one of these parcels, 711279900900, only the east 896 feet is proposed to be rezoned LIR, and the remaining western part of the parcel is proposed to remain as R1. The purpose of the rezoning application is to assemble the six centric parcels, except for a western portion of parcel 711279099000, with land to the east that is already zoned LIR to eventually construct a warehouse and distribution center for an online retailer. Warehouses and distribution centers are special land uses in the LIR zoning district. However, the land use proposal is conceptual at the time, at this time, and could change based on available development options of the zoning ordinance. At its meeting on December 7, 2020, the Planning Commission adopted an amendment to the Comprehensive Plan Future Land Use Map to reclassify the six subject parcels from medium low density residential, which is three dwellings unit per acre, to mixed use. The mixed use classification supports the LIR zoning in this area of the township along Michigan Avenue, so the rezoning application will be supported by the Comprehensive Plan if the Future Land Use Map Amendment is adopted. Uh, Director Smith, did you want to add anything? Um, I think that's a pretty thorough <clears throat> description. We do have Patrick Sloan on. If, uh, we have quite a few planning items tonight. If we could uh, elevate him to panelists, that would be great. And then um, if you wanted me to share my screen, I do have um, some slides for each of the, uh, the things uh, items tonight, if you want to see them. OK, all right, thank you. Um, does anyone have any questions? Stephen? Thank you, Madam Supervisor. Um, I um, earlier in the week had questions on um, the fact that this is a heavy, heavily wooded lot. And so I just wanted to ensure that making the, these changes that um, whoever develops, however development goes, that we will be ensured that we don't lose um, a bulk of the trees or that they are replaced as per our policies. And I, I reached out through the supervisor to Director Smith, and um, uh, he and his staff um, told me that in the process that they the um, the parties involved, uh, Mr. Ratner and such, have agreed that that the uh, trees should be uh, replaced per our policies or or um, the equal uh, dollar amounts, things like that. So that will be followed on and further in the process and I'm comfortable with that now. I don't know if I said that all right, Director Smith, but um, or Patrick, 
but um, you, I felt assured by you. Okay, thank you. And yeah, we did uh, confer with uh, Corporation Council too on, in regards to this. Any other questions? Tanya? Madam Supervisor, um, I also had uh, the same quad concern as uh, Trustee Snyderman. So uh, what Director Smith, uh, they, they, we have the assurances from them that uh, we will be having um, a replacement according to our policies or um, is, is that been confirmed with them? They have agreed to that or there's some sort of an understanding with them. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yes, there is. And I'll let uh, Patrick speak to that as well. Uh, thank you. The, uh, the applicants have expressed throughout their intent to meet the standards of the tree preservation uh, requirements in the zoning ordinance. And that was something that we expressed to them early in the process. And throughout the process, they've been in agreement that they intend to comply with those requirements. Um, concurrent with the rezoning, the applicants have also filed a special land use application to be considered by the township. If this uh, rezoning is adopted, um, the applicants will uh, next go to the Planning Commission for a public hearing on their special land use application. Uh, but at this point, what I can say is that on that special land use plan, they do show their intent to meet the requirements of the tree preservation. So their plans on that end of it have been consistent with our discussions throughout the rezoning process. Any other questions? Okay, great. I'm seeing none, Clerk Segris, can you please call roll on the motion? You're muted, Michael. Warninski. Aye. Foster. Aye. Ganguly. Ganguly. Aye. Oh, sorry. We have Hudek. Aye. Segrist High, Slavens. Aye. And Snyderman. Aye. Thank you. Motion passes for G1. G2, consider approval of special land use for Cherry Hill Preserve. Can I have a motion, please? Supervisor, I move that the board adopt the following resolution of the approval of special land use for Cherry Hill Preserve. Whereas project sponsor has requested special land use approval for 12 uh, two unit attached residential buildings on the north side of Cherry Hill Road between lots and uh, the eastern township boundary. And whereas the planning commission reviewed the request and applicable criteria voted seven to zero to recommend approval as the request meets the criteria of special land use approval under in section 27.03C of the zoning ordinance. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Board of Trustees of the Charter Township of Canton, Michigan does hereby approve the special land use request for 12 two unit attached residential buildings on parcel numbers listed. Uh, as the request meets the special land use criteria of the Canton Township zoning ordinance uh, pursuant to the information and plans provided subject to specific design criteria to be determined at the time of site plan review. Support. Thank you. The project sponsor proposes to construct 12 two unit attached residential buildings on the three subject contiguous parcels, which are currently vacant. The site is zoned R4 single family residential, which allows two unit attached residences via special land use. The allowable density of two unit attached single family buildings in the current R4 district is up to 5.18 units per acre. And the applicant proposes a density of 3.12 units per acre. The site has several wetland areas and the applicant has applied for a wetland permit from the Michigan Department of Envi Environment, Great Lakes and Energy. If approved by Eagley, most of the, mo many of the proposed two unit buildings will encroach into the 25 foot setbacks required by section 2.24A. 
At its meeting on November 12th, the Zoning Board of Appeals approved variances from the 25 foot wetland setback requirements for buildings 411 and the internal road. According to the applicant, the proposed two unit attached single family residential buildings will be owner occupied condominiums. At its meeting on September 8th, the Township Board of Trustees rezoned the site from R6 to R4 at the request of the applicant. While the max maximum density of two unit attached single family residential buildings in the R4 district, which is 5.18 units per acre, is less than the maximum density in the former R6 district, which is eight units per acre, some of the setbacks and separation distances in the R4 district are lower for a two unit attached single family residential building than the R6 district. Therefore, the R4 zoning district was a more appropriate zoning district for the applicant based on his development proposal. Uh, Patrick, did you want to add to that or Jade? Uh, I don't have anything extra to add to that, no. Okay, thanks. Um, I don't, and uh, I believe the applicant, Bruce Michael, may be uh, attendance at the meeting. So any questions, I think he's available. Okay, do we have any questions from the board? Oh, okay, all right. Seeing none, um, Clerk Segrist, can you please call on the motion? Korninski. Aye. Foster. Aye. Kanguli. Aye. Grim Hudek. Aye. Segrist I. Slavens. Aye. Snydeman. Aye. Thank you. Motion passes for G2. G3, consider approval of the Hampton Manor of Canton Plan Development District Amendment and Site Plan Amendment. Can I have a motion, please? Madam Supervisor, I move that the board adopt the following resolution, the approval of the Plan Development District Amendment Number 1 and Site Plan Amendment to Hampton Manor. Whereas the project sponsor has requested approval of an amendment to the plan development district for Hampton Manor on property located on the south side of Four Road and Western Bridge Road. And whereas the planning commission reviewed the amended uh, plan development plan, the plan development agreement and site plan modifications and voted seven to zero to recommend approval of the requests as they meet the criteria for a plan development result in definite benefits to the community and comply with the applicable site design requirements of the zoning ordinance, except where modifications are approved. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Board of Trustees of the Charter Township of Canton, Michigan does hereby approve the Hampton Manor Plan Development District Amendment and Site Plan Amendment on the tax parcel listed at 498014 Road as provided in the Plan Development Agreement Amendment and Plan Development subject to all applicable state and local development regulations. Support. Thank you. On September 25th, 2018, the Canton Township Board of Trustees approved the Hampton Manor of Canton Plan Development District, which is a 63 unit assisted living facility in a 59,000 square foot building on the south side of Ford Road, west of Ridge Road. The parcel is located to the east of Crimboli Nursery and extends easterly toward Ridge Road along the drain. Hampton Manor is currently under construction and the applicant proposes to remove a sunroom and activity room and add three units, which will increase the number of units to 66. The applicant proposes some minor modifications to the north and west side of the building facade as well as a result. Additionally, a revised floor plan is shown that illustrates a net increase in the square footage of sitting areas in and around the building. No other site plan changes are proposed and the originally approved Parking lot has a sufficient number of spaces for the 66 proposed units. When the plan development was originally approved, the definite benefits included provision of a sidewalk on the north side of Ford Road, providing walkable access along Ford Road to Patriot Park and connecting Parkside Estates to Ridge Road, provision of a transport van for the residents, enhancements of the wetland buffers by supplementing the planting and removal of debris and non-native plants providing over 68% open space, exceeding the minimum 25% required for plan development and additional parking over the minimum required for visitors. So Director Smith or Patrick, do you have anything to add? No, I think this is a pretty straightforward uh, request from an already approved development. Okay, are there any questions from the board? Steven? Trust. So yeah, sorry, I was on mute. Um, so I'm assuming that this is why I've seen sidewalks go in at Patriot Park. Is that true? 
Jade or Patrick. I think I uh, saw I, in the last week or so, because it says the north side. Yes, and I, I, I will be honest with you, I haven't been out there in the last week, but I can verify that and um, it would it would make sense unless Patrick, you have other information. Um, I've, uh, I've been out there in the last few weeks. There has been some sidewalk construction on that north side of Ford Road. Um, and I know that the applicant is required as part of their benefit to provide some sidewalk. I don't know precisely where though, but um, that is something that um, I believe engineering would be overseeing to make sure that that requirement's fulfilled. Okay, can, yeah, because I, I can definitely follow up on that and then let the board know. Yeah, because it says here in the RBA in the north side of Ford Road, but the, the this um, facility is on the south side, right? right. So, correct, correct, okay. yes. And so is it then, will there be sidewalk all the way to the corner at Ridge and then they'll be able to cross at Ridge and use the park? I'm trying to look at the map. I don't know if that, that's going to yet. No, there's some. Yeah, looking at the map, I don't know if you want to bring up the map in here, Jade. Um, but the um, the from the facilities to the corner, there's some undeveloped land there. I'm sure there's not sidewalks yet all the way to the corner. Yeah, I was looking at the next. Yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, is that this one? This is not the right one. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So I, I've seen sidewalks go in on the north side of Ford Road all along that park there, the future park. But okay. I don't know that they'll have sidewalks all the way to the corner from this facility yet on the south side. Okay. Uh, and, and I apologize for not having all those answers, but I will ask yeah, that's fine. activity between all those and then send a, a quick email to everybody updating on where the sidewalks exactly are going to go and how the, because uh, if they're giving the benefit across the, the street on the north side, it does make sense how are residents on the south side supposed to get there and where are they supposed to cross at. So I will get some more information and detail on that and send yeah. that out. Okay, thank you. And thank you for the Hampton team if in case they are doing that, which is part of the agreement. Thank you. That's great. Thanks. Patrick, do you know, did they discuss that in the planning commission meeting? Uh, the, the meeting in December, um, I don't think we discussed the south side and I was just looking through their site plans and I don't see anything additional on the south side of Ford Road. Um, the only thing that I saw in the definite benefit was that north side uh, because on the south side of Ford Road, that would be off site for them. Um, yeah, that's owned by someone else, but on the north side, it's owned by us, right? So, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's see. Okay. Any any other questions? I'm not seeing. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. I see none. Clerk Segrist, can you please call the roll on the motion? Korninski. Aye. Foster. Aye. Inguli. Aye. Graham Hudak. Aye. Segrist Aye. Slavens. Aye. And Snydeman. Snydeman? Aye. Did you hear me? Can you hear me? Thank you. <laughs> Motion passes. Item G4. Um, consider preliminary approval of the Monarch Grove Planned Development District. Madam Supervisor, I move that the board approve the following resolution, the approval of the preliminary plan development district for Monarch Grove, whereas project sponsor has requested preliminary approval of a planned development district for Monarch Grove located on the southwest corner of Ford Road and Gorman Road, which is located between Beck and Canton Center. And whereas the Planning Commission reviewed the preliminary plan development plan and draft plan development agreement, voted six to one to recommend approval of the request as it meets the criteria for plan development and results in definite benefits to the community. Now, therefore, be resolved, the Board of Trustees of the Charter Township of Canton, Michigan, does hereby approve the Monarch Grove Preliminary Plan Development District on the tax parcel numbers listed as proposed in the plan development agreement and plan documents subject to, one, the requirements of Wayne County and MDOT being satisfied prior to review of the final PDD, 
two, updating the PD agreement to include the definite benefits, schedule of modifications and proposed age restrictions. Three, the plans and PD agreement uh, state that the land bank parking is not uh, permitted without explicit approval from the Planning Commission on site plan review. And finally, for the exterior material that buildings comply with the zoning ordinance requirement for 50% masonry. Here's support. Support. Thank you. The applicant proposes to construct a housing for the elderly use at the southwest corner of Ford and Gorman Road, located between Beck Road and Canton Center Road. The proposed housing for the elderly use consists of 224 units on 17.25 acres, which are proposed as follows. 63 units of independent living, 95 units of assisted living, 53 units in phase one and 42 units in phase two, 32 units of memory care and 34 attached elderly cottages. The site consists of eight parcels that are currently zoned R1 and R3. Housing for the elderly is a special land use in the R1 and R3 three districts and the proposed plan development application is consistent with the zoning requirements for housing for the elderly with the exception of the modification proposed pursuant to section 27.04 of the zoning ordinance. Each plan development district is required to demonstrate definite benefits to the community. While the project sponsor notes several benefits in the application materials, the following definite benefits are the most consistent with section 27.04. Architectural design of the buildings, paving of Gorman Road to the site's entrance, including reconstruction of the approach to three lanes with dedicated right and left turn lanes from Gorman Road onto Ford Road, extending the sidewalk along the south side of Ford Road eastward about 620 feet to connect to the existing sidewalk in front of Bell Tire, the addition of northbound and southbound right turn lights at the intersection of Canton Center Road and Ford Road to permit overlap phases for northbound and southbound right turns, maintaining over 25% of the site as open space and other recreation areas for residents, the development that will include pickleball and bocce. Um, Director Smith or Patrick, did you want to add to that? Oh, Diane, go ahead. I just have a real quick question they, because I know that Gorman Road is so narrow. They are going to be widening it then? Uh, yes, that's correct. Uh, the proposal is for the applicant to uh, widen the portion of Gorman Road that um, that meets Ford Road. They they intend to pave Gorman Road um, as far south as their entrance there on that plan. And uh, so they're proposing to pave there. Uh, additionally, um, where Gorman Road meets Ford Road, uh, they're proposing to make Gorman Road uh, three lanes uh, on the north side. So it will have a dedicated left turn lane on the Ford Road. So somebody that wants to turn right on the Ford Road will have a dedicated right and a dedicated left uh, going out. Okay, thank you. Yeah, because it's very, I'm sure you've seen it. Mm -hmm. One lane right yes. now. <laughs> okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Oh, you're on mute. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm wondering about, um, I know several of the residents had um, attended the planning commission meeting and um, are concerned about only having a portion of the road paved um, of Gorman Road. And, you know, I guess I'm, I'm wondering if that's any possibility of having further, you know, further down the road paved. Um, also wondering about um, just some of the other modifications that are being proposed. Okay. <clears throat> Um, with the uh, with Gorman Road, um, that was originally not uh, proposed to be fully paved as a definite benefit, and um, the the applicant um, didn't include that for a couple of reasons. First, is the applicant wasn't sure if the residents farther south on Gorman Road wanted that road paved or if they wanted to keep it as as a gravel road and more rural. 
uh, because if they were to pave it and, and do so to county standards, um, that's a much wider road um, that's more impervious surface. That's probably some tree removal to get the, the ditching and the drainage. Um, and then another reason was that um, if they proposed to pave that road as a definite benefit, that would be a definite benefit that would only serve a handful of residents versus um, some of the traffic signal lights over at Ford and Canton Center or the, the sidewalk that would connect all the way up to uh, Belt Tire and Kroger, which would benefit uh, several people. Um, so that was why uh, that was why they had proposed that. Okay, um, and I do I see there's a, it looks like a, a small entrance off of Ford Road. Is that is that the emergency entrance? That's correct. So um, if there were an, a medical emergency or something like that, that they would go in that entrance rather than using Gorman Road. Is that right? Um, they would use Gorman Road, and uh, if for some ex for some reason that Gorman Road was not available, um, then that access from Ford Road would be a secondary access for emergency vehicles, so that they could get to the site from two different access points. I see. Okay. Yeah. And, th and that's pretty standard with uh, any of the newer developments that we're looking at when we work with uh, public safety in regards to how they could get in and out with both uh, their vehicles and, and just access in case one was was not available to be used. Okay, I guess I'm just, I'm concerned about the, the traffic on Gorman Road because that has been, you know, a very, um, I guess I would consider it kind of a rural road. Um, and so just trying to see if um, there are ways to minimize the traffic there. I, I like the idea of the sidewalk um, extending down down Ford Road. Um, not sure how many people will utilize it because Ford is such a busy road. Um, and I really, I do like the the villas that they're proposing here. I think those are um, a really a neat idea for continuing care from, you know, independent living all, all the way through memory care. I think it was, um, or at least assisted living. But um, also wondering about the height of the building. Um, I know there were some concerns about that mentioned. Go ahead, Patrick. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the height was, uh, was one of the major concerns that, uh, that, that we had as, as staff um, and what we heard from uh, some of the residents. For a, uh, for a housing for the elderly use, the maximum height is three stories uh, or 35 feet in height. And when the applicants had started the process, they were proposing a building that was four stories. And during the process, we had uh, discouraged the four stories because we didn't want anything that was higher than that three story height. So the applicants, uh, during the course of the uh, preliminary reviews with staff, the applicants had lowered that height to three stories. Uh, but they are still over the uh, 35 foot maximum height. Um, height is uh, calculated as um, starting at the grade at the ground and then going up uh, halfway between Eve and the ridge. So it's about halfway up the roof line. Um, so from those, between those two points, the maximum is 35 feet high. And what they're proposing is um, 42.83 feet. So they're just under eight feet higher than, um, than the maximum in terms of the number of feet, but they, they are held at that three stories. Can you give any kind of um, background on why we have that 35 feet um, restriction normally? Um, for Canton Township specifically, um, I don't know, but in other communities in the state where I've worked, where there's a, a two foot or 25 foot height or a three or a, a, a two story and 25 foot height or a three story and 35 foot height. Um, the reason that they, they have that is uh, typically because uh, to the top of the first floor, it's 10 feet. So a two story building is 20 feet to the eave. And then if it's a, if it's a pitch roof where it goes 30 to the peak um, between 20 and 30 is 25. So a two story and 25 uh, foot height would allow for um, uh, two, 
two 10 story floors, plus an additional five feet for halfway between even the ridge for the peak roof. Okay, so it's just um, based on estimates for how, how high each story would be. And I, I was just wondering if there's any kind of um, safety issue as far as, you know, making something too high or if there was a, that's why we had the regulation. Uh, that's a good point about the uh, safety issue because whenever we get plans in, uh, they're, they're reviewed by planning services, uh, engineering services, uh, building inspection services, and the fire department. So the fire marshal reviews all the plans that come in. And one of the first things they look at is the building height and um, fire truck access. And depending on the height of the building, they'll make sure that they have the right drive locations to be able to uh, fight a fire or meet an emergency at that building. Um, so that's something every and every time there's a plan revision, the fire marshal reviews it. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? All summer? Not really a question, just more of a comment. Um, I just wanted to point out that I'm glad to see um, in this RBA and in the previous RBA that the community benefit um, is additional sidewalk. Um, I'm glad to see that. So I just wanted to make that point. Thank you, Tanya. Yeah, I um, just had a couple of comments and question here. Um, first of all, I really like um, how the plan, how they have planned it, and how it meets the community. They have uh, done a community requirement uh, now, a survey, and finding out if that meets the community needs and. Uh, and I really liked how it's just not one building, but multiple building, and there is uh, some green spaces incorporated there. Um, my main concern was, um, you know, there is a three lanes on four road till the Crosswick Court subdivision, and then it just narrows out there right in front of Gorman Road. Uh, it's just two lanes, and since uh, Ford Road is a county road, um, so I just wanted to ask uh, Mr. Sloan if there is any, like, if, are you seeing, uh, you think there would be an, any issues with that or because we cannot really work on making it a three lane until, unless the county, we have to work with the county for that. Uh, sure. Um, where the, the existing condition on Ford Road is, uh, Ford Road is three lanes up to uh, from from Canton Center uh, going westward, and then as it gets to Gorman, it start that third lane goes away. So there's a dedicated left turn lane uh, going westbound on Ford uh, into Gorman. Um, the Gorman is under the jurisdiction of Wayne County, and uh, Ford Road is under the jurisdiction of MDOT. And the applicants have sent the plans to both MDOT and Wayne County for uh, review and comment. And uh, we're, we're especially interested to see um, what the comments from MDOT come back with because um, MDOT may look at the condition on Ford Road and have a requirement that we don't yet know of, um, which is why in one of the um, recommendations from the Planning Commission uh, or one of the conditions from the Planning Commission as well as um, in the RBA this evening is that one of the conditions is that the requirements of Wayne County and MDOT are satisfied prior to review of the final PDD. Uh, we don't know yet when those comments will come back, um, but um, the applicants have submitted their plans to MDOT and Wayne County for the review um, for the conditions for Ford Road and Gorman Road. And if I can just comment on that real quick, and uh, Supervisor Hudak, um, we have met with MDOT and Ford Road West, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, Ford Road West of Canton Center is on MDOT's radar. And they do look at all of the, the traffic studies that, that are going on, that, that people are performing out there when they're looking at those developments because they know down the road, we are gonna have um, some issues with Ford Road being two lanes in certain areas there. So we're in contact with them. It's already on their radar and we'll see uh, what that looks like um, as we move into the future. Thank you. Um. So I was glad to see that um, the applicant agreed to um, modify the plan to ensure there's 50% masonry. Did I get that right, Patrick? 
Yes. Okay. I believe they verbally agreed to that uh, during the planning commission meeting. So we'll see that when it gets further down the planning cycle. I'm sure. Uh, okay. Correct. If the um, if the uh, proposal for preliminary uh, PD is um, approved by the township board and all the conditions are adopted, the next step will be for the applicant to re return for final plan development review, which is reviewed by both the planning commission and the township board. And on that final PD review, they would be required to show the 50% masonry. Okay. As far as the sidewalks go, which of course I'm always for, um, do they own the parcel between Gorman and, and Bell Tire in order to put those, or is there a right-of-way issue that we have to resolve for them? Um, they don't own that property. Um, and I'm not aware of any right-of-way issues um, that exist between those two sites. Uh, but that's something they would have to coordinate with MDOT within their right away. Okay, so the sidewalk would be in the MDOT property. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So it's not some private owner that we have to worry about. Um, I don't believe so. Okay. All right. Very good. I mean, it's nice to um, have a memory care facility going in as well. Um, I know there's growing needs for that in our community. Um, Patrick, last question. There was some talk in the planning commission minutes of different um, uh, citizens that walk down Gorman Road to get to Kroger's. Do you know how that works or was that explained? I didn't totally understand that. Uh, yes, I can go into a little bit of detail. Um, so to, um, to the south is, um, is Berkshire, which was before um, the uh, township board, I think within the last few months and the attached single family uh, residential developments to the south, um, they have Waterside Road, it goes north from Salts and it dead ends at the south side of Gorman. And uh, several years ago, it was decided that Gorman would not connect to Waterside so that there would not be a lot of cross traffic. Wow. Um, so that's blocked off, but somebody, but the roads are very close to each other where they terminate. So somebody could theoretically walk from Gorman and then on to um, across on the water side and then go uh, east. I don't know the name of that road is, but they could go east to the Kroger there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm looking at it's Greystone. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, if the only other thing I'd add is if you wanted to talk to the residents, the few of them that do live on Gorman and that they're interested in having it paid, and um, that would be an interesting discussion if the applicant is willing. I know that there's great there's additional costs to doing that, but it might be benefit as well. But again, I'm, I'm all for the sidewalk. So. All right, thank you. Other questions? I don't know if the um, developer is online or somebody with the senior citizen, but do you know if they're going to have their own transportation center? I'm sorry, service in terms of, because it's independent living also. Yeah, I do believe the petitioner is online. Uh, oh. Well, Should be Mr. David Endress. David Endress. We could promote him, please. And if anyone has questions for him. Yes. Yep. And he's got his hand up, too. <laughs> okay. Hey, Mr. Endress. Can you hear us? You're muted, Mr. Endress. Mr. Andrews, can you hear us? You're, you're muted if you if you can, if you let us know. Okay, thank you. I apologize, it just took a second to pop up on the screen here. I'm David Andrews with Kirko Development. Um, generally, these communities uh, have a uh, both a bus uh, for more community type or multiple residents, and there's also a, a car um that provides transportation to the residents uh you know on and off site that is owned by the community and operated by the community okay is there a doctor on site all the time or there is uh on a partial basis uh there's a, a medical director um who uh is basically in charge of the units that uh, are licensed 
which in this case, uh, you know, we would have three neighborhoods. Uh, he would be in charge of uh, the medical needs of both the uh, memory care and the assisted living. Okay, all right. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Andres about the facility? No. Okay. Would you like to say anything else, Mr. Andres? I uh, well, I we're very excited about the project. We feel that uh, Canton is in desperate need of a. a a project like this. Historically, we found that 70% uh, of the residents uh, of our communities live within a 10 minute drive of the site. So this is really intended as an amenity to your community as well as uh, the adult children that live in the, your community, which would like to be close to their parents. So uh, we're trying uh, to provide a best in class project and uh, we're excited to bring this product to Canton. All right, thank you. Any more questions? I don't see any out there. Okay, great, thank you. Clerk Segers, can you please take a roll call on the motion? Borninski. Aye. Foster. Aye. Ganguly. Aye. Graham Hudak. Aye. Seegers die. Slavens. Aye. Snyderman. Aye. All right, thank you. Motion passes. Item G5 um, on the calendar. Consider awarding bid and approved purchase order for exterior painting of public works building. I'm having some. It's okay, I know. PDF issues here with the network, and okay. Madam Supervisor, I move to approve a purchase order and award bid for paint replacement at Canton DPW to TN Construction LLC in the amount of $49,000. Thank you. On December 3rd, 2020, bids were returned for exterior painting of the Canton Public Works building. 10 bids were received with TN construction coming in lowest. References have been checked and Canton Municipal Services Public Works is recommending TN construction LLC in the amount of $49,000. Director Smith, do you have anything to add? Um, just one thing that I uh, failed to put into the RBA, which is this is actually part of the approved CIP plan that the board approved um, last year. Um, so this is just following the CIP plan uh, and I inadvertently did not get that put into the RBA. Okay. All right, any questions? Luck caller. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, that's debatable. <laughs> um, probably something neutral with some nice accents for the supervisor. Yeah, there you go. No more beige. <laughs> no more. All right, thank you. No questions. Okay, Clerk Seekers, can you please call a roll on the motion? Wojninski. Aye. Foster. Aye. Ganguly. Aye. Graham Pudek. Aye. Seekers die. Slavens. Aye. Snyderman. Aye. Great, motion passes. Item G6, consider purchase of water meters and metering control devices for 2021. And supervisor, I move to accept the quote from Aetna Supply Company and approve a purchase order not to exceed $656,465 and authorize the Public Works Division to purchase the necessary meter equipment and supplies. Further moved away the finance purchasing policy requiring formal bids as these items are supplied under a sole source contract through the Aetna Supply Company. Support. Thank you. In order to supply and maintain water service for residential and commercial accounts, the Public Works Division maintains an inventory of supplies. This inventory is replenished yearly in order to meet projections for the upcoming year. 
Equipment such as water meters and radio read transceivers that makes use are installed for new projects and also replaces equipment wears out. The Public Works Division continues an ongoing replacement program for older meters and MXU devices. This ongoing program allows for older, less accurate devices to be replaced with new accurate devices that provide less water loss in our system. Canton's 24,000 plus active water accounts are now all equipped with radio read devices, which allow a streamlined, less labor intensive collection of meter data. In the past, Canton has purchased from Aetna Supply Company, a sole source supplier for census meters and equipment. For this reason, we are requesting a waiver of the purchase policy requirements to solicit bids. Most of the unit prices stayed the same for 2021 compared to last year. The total value of the inventory required for 2021 is $656,465. Director Smith, anything to add? Uh, no, unless there's any questions. All right. Any questions? No. All right, thank you. Uh, Clerk Seegers, can you please call the roll for the motion? Warninski. Aye. Foster. Aye. Ganguly. Aye. Grimpudek. Aye. Stegerstein Slavens. Aye. Snyderman. Aye. Thank you, motion passes. Item G7, consider approval of engineering services and purchase order to Ohm Advisors for water storage analysis. Madam Supervisor, I move to approve a contract and purchase order in an amount not to exceed $12,500 for professional engineering services with OHM or OHM advisors to perform a water storage analysis. Support. Thank you. The Charter Township of Canton is exploring the benefits of potentially joining a new Western Wayne County Water Authority. Membership in this new water authority will require executing a legal agreement creating the authority in collaboration with the three other potential members, City of Livonia, City of Westland, and Northville Township on system operations. For the new water authority to realize benefits of reduced GLWA revenue requirements, a new 3 million gallon water storage facility is needed. Municipal Service Public Works desires to have an evaluation performed so, better, so a recommendation could be made to the Canton Board of Trustees on whether it is better to join the potential water authority or to make additional improvements to their current system without an authority. Director Smith, do you want to add anything? Um, ju just to say that um, I think it's exciting to look at these regional authorities and partnerships with other communities. And when we have been meeting, um, it's all been decided that we all should go back and really analyze our own systems and compare it to what the possible benefits are of the authority um, to make the best possible decision. So that's why we're coming before you today to, to do that study. Okay, great. Any questions? Kate? Um, a comment and a question. So I, I think this is really exciting and um, I think that's great that we're looking into this. Um, wondering about the water tower that was previously built. Um, when was that built and do we know, um, well, we, we must know <laughs> how big it is. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a two and a half million dollar tank. Um, it was built and I'm going to probably have to rely on Wendy Trumbull because this predates me a little bit. And then also Brad Lear, our BPW manager, is actually um, in, on the call tonight as well. Um, I believe it was com complete in 2017 um, and it was a two and a half million uh, gallon tank. Um, and it has uh, worked well, but we do need to do another analysis as we've had a couple of years under our belt to, to look at the usage and, um, and, and how it's actually performed for us. Okay. All right. So this, um, if if we decided to go ahead with this, this would be an addition to that, if it's, it could, if it's it, recommended. It could possibly be. Um, one of the things that we're discussing, and, and I'll go through more of this when we talk about our water rates too, in a, in a month or so, is that um, if we join the authority, there's absolutely some capital expenditures that are needed because only two of those communities actually have storage tanks. One is Canton Township and the other is Northfield Township. The city of Livonia and the city of Westland do not have any 
um, storage um, capacity. So if the authority is, um, if we move forward with the authority, there will be some expense down the road. And that's really what this study is gonna look at and say, okay, does it make sense for us to put our money towards an authority or has the money that we've already invested, is it working for us and is it beneficial for the township to proceed? Yeah, that sounds great. Thank okay. you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Um, Director Trumbull, did you wanna add anything? No, I think um, Director Smith did a good job. I'm happy to answer any questions, though, if there are any. I, I can add that when we did build the water storage tank back in 2016 and we issued the debt, that was, although we're still paying on the debt, um, the savings that we um, received from the GLWA savings, it paid itself off in about three years. So we've already re recouped the cost, but we aren't able to um, pay down the debt until the end, can't finance that early. But it was a very successful project when we did do that. that, that sorry. Go ahead, Michael. Oh, uh, Director Trumbull, is that debt being paid down out of the sewer and water, water and sewer fund? Correct. Yes. Makes sense. Any other questions? Okay, Clark Speakers, can you please call the roll on the motion? Korninski. Aye. Foster. Aye. Ganguly. Aye. Grim Hudak. Aye. Segrist, aye. Slavens. Aye. And Snyderman. Aye. Thank you. Motion passes. Item G8. Consider approval of a budget amendment and purchase order to A3C Architects for the Architectural Design and ADA Improvements for the Capital Improvement Plan CLS. All right. Madam Supervisor, if it would please you, I would like to read both of these uh, motions as one. All right, I move to amend the total project budget as follows. Uh, increase expenditures, the amount of $54,451 to the Capital Outlay ADA Improvements Fund. <clears throat> increase um, 60, Okay, so they're all capital outlay ADA improvement funds. So I move to amend the total project budget as follows in your RBA. Um, I further move to approve a purchase order for the architectural design and ADA improvements for the capital improvement plan to AE3C Architects at 115 East Liberty Street in Ann Arbor, Michigan, 48104 in an amount not to, uh, an amount of um, $42,692 to be paid from the listed CIP accounts. I hear a support. Support. Thank you. Canton Township currently holds a service contract with A3C Architects for assistance in general architectural design of Canton owned facilities. Leisure Services staff is recommending mm -hmm. A3C Architects for the architectural design, including ADA for the capital improvement plan, A3C architects have previously determined the ADA needs within the Canton owned facilities as part of the ADA transition plan. The total cost for capital upgrade designs, including ADA improvements is $42,692. Additionally, a budget amendment will be necessary for the projects that were originally budgeted for 2020. Uh, Director Honberger, do you have anything to add? No, I'd just be happy to answer any questions. I was just disappointed the clerk didn't read each of those account numbers. For <laughs> we can go back. <laughs> That's a brutal RBA. No. Right. Try writing it. <laughs> any questions? <clears throat> Kate, Trustee Kate. Um, so I think it's great that we're working on um, the, the ADA plan and getting everything up into compliance. I was wondering if um, at some point could the board have, uh, and, and maybe this has been given out um, before, but not since I've been on the board, which hasn't been very long, mm -hmm. um, but some kind of um, timeline of, you know, what, what um, has already been done in the plan and what needs to be done still. And I know there were some buildings listed, but you know, I would like to know um, exactly what needs to be done. 
still. Specifically for ADA improvements? Mm -hmm. yeah, certainly we can do that. That's all included in our transition plan. We have a timeline and budget. And okay. The transition plan was um, directly included in the CIP plan for funding, so we can provide that to you. Okay, that would be great. And Director Trumbo, you want to tell them what you're working on for these meetings? Um, sure, I can I can show them kind of the rough draft right now if you want me to share my screen. Sure. I think my internet's been a little glitchy, so I apologize if it goes out. Okay, so we have a um, spreadsheet that's showing right now specifically um, the CIP that was <laughs> supposed to be done in 2020 and 2021 that we issued the debt for. So we, we want to show, have the board, be able to show the board the status of those projects. So we're working on it. We're hoping to have it a little bit um, more concise and maybe make it in pictures for some people who would prefer to look at it in pictures, but here's all the detail right now. So this first um, page of projects been completed um, or removed from the CIP for whatever. So it, at this point in time, we had about $82,000 remaining budgets available for other projects. So we've completed um, the target system has already been um, purchased and completed by public safety. Some of the um, roof has been completed. Some of the signage that we had to do for ADA has been completed. Uh, some of the um, bathrooms have been um, completed and some of the storm waters. Some projects have been removed from the P plan um, for one reason or another. So for example, this at the gun range, this target berm and extension, um, there was about $400,000 budgeted and um, Director Baugh had said we could about cut that at, at about in half. So we removed 200,000 from the initial CIP. Um, Western Wayne, there was a building that we have that was being occupied that we've decided, um, the board has decided or the, uh, the direction we were heading was to sell that building because we don't have use for it anymore at this point in time. So we didn't want to put money into a building that we potentially. Um, so there was some work that was identified that we are not going to do at this point in time. Um, and then a couple more projects that um, were little, but were determined that we could um, do some maintenance work instead of um, spending this much money in capital and extend their useful life. So a couple of project scopes have changed. So there's about $105,000 of bond money that we had issued for projects we have available to spend on other projects that have been completed or removed from the CIP. The next few pages, and, I, and I, I'm happy to send this out as is, so the board has a copy of this. Again, this is just for the projects that we um, are in the 20 and 21 years. Um, this next section are projects that have been awarded um, or started. So awarded means maybe the whole project is getting going. So the top line item, for example, fire station two, we've already got that one awarded. It's almost done. Um, but there's other projects on here. If you go down the list, such as, um, like the summit electrical control right here, the total projects, 143,000, we've awarded 80, um, 200 of that. That's just because we're in the design phase of it. So there's still a big chunk of that remaining on the project that hasn't been awarded yet. So all these are listed here. We don't want to say right now that this some of this money is available for other projects until the projects have been completed in case, you know, something a lot of times comes up on projects and you might have to spend more money than we expected. So that's where those projects stand. And then the rest of them on here are projects that have not yet been started in any capacity. They haven't been planned or designed or anything. So my goal is to have this updated um, and provide this out um, at a minimum monthly or provide this every meeting where there's an RBA that's asking for something from the from the capital plan, just so you guys have an update on that. So I'm gonna try to make it a little bit prettier. Again, like I said, maybe um, try to come up with some charts or graphs that make it a little bit easier to read so you don't have to look at all the details of it, but provide the details for those of you who like that. So this is kind of the starting point of, of what we would like to provide. And if anybody has suggestions or something specific they'd like to see, I'm, I'm open to hearing anything like that. Any questions? Tanya, trustee. Yeah, um, I had a question for Director Hanberger. Um, so the RBA lists the actual work and the costs related to that um, to make the ADA compliant changes. 
uh, are these the ones that are being planned for the 21 calendar year or is this an ongoing thing that will happen in the next couple of years these are the projects that uh, we're planning for 2021 so th and this is specifically for the architectural design we'll have to come back for the award of the construction once we bid out the individual projects okay so the construction will so these are the these are the buildings that are being assigned for for actual construction work in 2021 that's correct thank you thank you anyone else all right, thanks for the presentation too. And yeah, we'll get there with the pictures. We'll be able to flash up what we've spent and what's going on. Okay, great. Uh, Clerk Segrist, can we please have a roll call on the motion? Waninsky. Aye. Foster. Aye. Benguli. Aye. Graham Hudek. Aye. Segrist, aye. Slavens. Aye. Snyderman. Aye. Great, motion passes. Our last item on the agenda, uh, G, G9, reconsideration of step increases for part-time variable hour and seasonal employees for 2021. Madam Supervisor, I move to approve the 1121 step increases for part-time and variable hour employees who worked at any hours in 2020. I also move to approve that seasonal employees who return in 2021 receive a step increase over their previous step upon their return. All right, thank you. On December 8, 2020, the Township Board acted on the part-time wage scale approving the updated rates for the PSA position while also limiting the January 1st annual step increases for part-time seasonal and variable hour employees to only those employees that worked a minimum of 480 hours between January 1st and November 28th, 2020. Part-time variable hour employees who met the hours requirement approved by the December 8th RBA received their step increases on January 1st, 2021. Seasonal employees who met the hours requirements were scheduled to receive their increase upon their return for the 2021 season. With this RBA, the board is asked to reconsider a separate board action that would ensure part-time and variable employees who worked any hours in 2020 receive a step increase on 1121. Seasonal employees would receive their annual increase when and if they return in 2021 season. The wage scale will remain as previously presented to the board on December 8th. Are there any questions? Okay, seeing none. Um, Clerk Segris, can you please call the roll on the motion? Warninsky. Aye. Foster. Ganguly. Aye. Graham Hudek. Aye. Segrist Aye. Slavens. Aye. 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 Motion passes. Um, our next item is public comment. Do we have any public comment? I'm looking in the attendees right now. I don't see anybody on the phone, so you can raise your hand via Zoom. No public comment. Okay, do any of the directors have anything that they would like to comment on before we close? No. Um, Chris, I don't know if you wanted to speak about the, the vaccination or well, the testing site, I'm sorry, behind the administration building, the status we are at. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So um, we are in the process of finishing the um, final steps and setting the trailer up back there, the temporary trailer. And we um, are putting up the Wi-Fi signal and getting the, uh, the video camera set up, the security system set up. Um, we've had a, um, a lot of support from the other directors and the township board, and uh, it appears that we will probably be able to start testing next Friday. Um, so we're going to try and get that word out. Um, I know Will Hayes, the emergency manager, is continuing to have those conversations um, with the county. And as soon as we know a little bit more, we'll make sure we get that in the focus and get that out to um, the members of the community so that they can start coming for testing. So that's exciting news. Um, and then we'll continue to monitor the county to see if we can pull the vaccinations into the site as well. So. This is a good joint effort between a lot of our groups, between um, our leisure services, fire, EM, 
um, police and our DPW. So this, you know, and, and a lot of the directors with input. So this really worked well coming together so we can get it ready for Wayne County. Does anyone have any questions? How will you sign up? Is there a county website that will allow you to sign up for testing at this location? So there's supposed to be an app, and um, but they are going to take just um, drive ups. So you don't even need an appointment for testing. So that's also good news as well. So if you drive up and don't make the appointment, it might take a little bit longer because you'll have to fill out some paperwork prior to the testing. Um, so they'll encourage you to do that. And we'll make sure that we get that information out so that everybody can do it beforehand um, and save a little bit of time. Thanks. You're welcome. Anything else from our directors or managers? Um, any boards? Michaels, Clerk Seagrass. Yeah, so as half a director, half a board member, right? Um, mm -hmm. uh, the clerk's office, so we have been selected um, for a, an audit, right? So um, believe it or not, if you go into some parts of the internet, you will believe that there are no audits in elections. That is factually inaccurate, but very common right now along with a lot of other factually inaccurate information. So be very careful when you get information online and from other elected officials, <laughs> which is such a weird thing to say, <laughs> oh goodness. But yeah, so we have um, a, a standard audit of one of our precincts and we've been selected for some of the risk limiting audits, which believe it or not, were passed by voters in 2018 and are written into our state constitution. So the fact that there is some confusion with some of the legislators in Lansing that we don't have audits when we have it built into our state constitution is hilarious um, because these people are elected to pass laws. But anyway, uh, so we actually have two audits going on. We're going to be auditing uh, Precinct 10 in Canton Township and we are going to be doing some risk limiting ballot audits as well. Um, we'll be conducting those next week and we're going to be live streaming them too. So I'll uh, make sure I get the link out to everybody. You can watch my staff as we safely and socially distance. Uh, and we go through those, those, um, those precincts. So we're really excited about that. This is pretty cool. Um, everybody, all municipalities in the state right now have been selected for the risk limiting audits. And so they're going on all over uh, the state of Michigan. Um, so it's pretty cool. Really exciting. Wow, thank you. Do you need the hand count or they're just basically gonna look at your totals? So we will be hand, so the risk limiting audit involves a, a hand recount. The mm. standard audit is just looking at the procedures and things along those lines. So pulling all the information, double checking that everything was done correctly, not looking at the ballots, so precinct 10. However, the risk limit audit, yeah, we will be pulling but ballots and recounting them. Um, and that's only for specific ones that were selected by the state. Uh, my office will, once the election has been released, we will be, we will be doing some hand recounts of some precincts. I wanna go through um, some of the out of balance precincts. We had, um, sometimes uh, inspectors will make errors and um, the list of voters will be off by one from the list of, from the number of ballots counted. And usually um, it's a result of them failing to put someone's name into the poll book. So we're gonna go through, pull out the applications to vote, get the list of voters and then pull the ballots, which we don't know whose ballots who, right? Because you have a constitutional right to a secret ballot, which is exciting um, and awesome. But um, we'll be balancing that list of voters to the applications to vote to find out precisely where some of the inspectors, the board of inspectors may have gotten off by one, um, which happens. Uh, and then we can coach them through that for the future elections to make sure that they are able to balance debt on. Uh, Great. Great, yeah. thank you. Despite what you'll find on the internet, being off by one uh, or being out of balance is not atypical. It's standard. It happens all throughout the state and in all 50 states. And it is not indicative or a representative of any type of election fraud. It's, it's typically a, an example of a retired citizen who was volunteering to participate in the democratic process, making an error because they're stressed and it's a job that they only do twice every, every two or four years. And not specific to just this recent election. <laughs> oh God, no. 
Now, this was actually one of the better, despite, despite what you hear from some elected officials or read on the internet, this was one of the best run elections in, um, in US history. Oh, good, great. Thank you. Any questions? Chris, do you have something? Yeah, I figured I might as well give you guys an update too on the uh, fire station. So we got some exciting stuff coming um, and I probably haven't updated you. There was a little bit of delay um, due to getting some uh, construction material in. They had to change some lights over as well as uh, the countertops were a little delayed, all COVID related stuff, um, getting materials in there. Um, but we are looking for probably the second to third week of February at this point. Um, we're gonna do a final walkthrough, I'm sorry, not a final walkthrough, a punch list walkthrough next Friday. Um, station's coming along great, so I can't wait to get you guys out there and uh, get you through the station. And as soon as we can do that, um, we will get you out there. So it's good progress out there and uh, exciting. You know, when we spend this kind of money, it's uh, not very often. And um, the uh, I know that the firefighters are all excited to get into the station as well. So. It's going to be a big improvement for our township. Thank you. Yeah, there's going to be a surprise for everybody, everyone at the ribbon cutting too. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Chad? Yeah, I just want to mention, you know, Thursday night, myself, the chair manager, Green County, and you, as a supervisor, for people listening or participating in the conference, Western Wayne um, Partners in Progress meeting, for Progress meeting, which is a listening tour that we're working with the independent uh, person that's moderating with Western Wayne County NAACP. And it's a discussion among uh, members of uh, Western Wayne County and it's facilitated and tried to learn more as a police department. I know there's 12 police chiefs, I believe uh, one supervisor, which is our supervisor and two mayors participating in the HR manager, which is also ours too. So it's gonna be a fun event. Um, we're going to learn a lot. And this is a third one. This is the second one. It's going to be virtual through Facebook Live. So um, that's coming up Thursday at 530. Um, and you can live stream it through the conference at Western Wayne's Facebook page. Yes, it's also on Canton Township Government um, Facebook page. Um, in terms of information. Uh, Director Holmberger, we're also having an event um, to remember our COVID, um, those who have died in Canton of COVID-19. So Director Holmberger, do you want to walk us through that? What's going to happen? All right, that's correct. So on January 19th at uh, five, uh, people start showing up around five and the ceremony will start around 5.15. Um, we'll have a vigil um, with some luminaries and bell uh, ringing of the bell for all the victims of COVID-19. Um, we'll specifically be focusing on Canton residents. However, um, any residents that have family outside of Canton are welcome to, to join and uh, create a luminary bag for anyone that they choose um, for that ceremony. And then we'll, we're gonna have more information pushed out very soon on Facebook and the, the township website as well. And this is gonna be, um, we're joining a national event with cities and towns across the country, including um, Washington DC, where they'll be around the reflecting pond all at the right. same time. And this is, and I failed to mention, it'll be at the amphitheater in Heritage Park. Yeah, so please join us. Pass the word. And, and it'll also be broadcast on Facebook Live. So if you choose for social distancing reasons, obviously we're, we're not looking for a huge gathering. We want people to be safe. Um, we don't want to cause more issues with this event. So you can participate virtually as well. Yes, light a um, they asked, yeah, if people stay at home and do it if they could light a candle or put a light in their window. Anything else? Great. Okay, good meeting. Um, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Support. Support. Thank you. Clark Segris, can you please call the roll to, do, to adjourn the meeting? Roninsky. Aye. Foster. Foster. Oh, I think she's frozen. Yeah, I think so. Hi. Can you hear oh, me? Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Rem Hudek. Hi. Sigrist Eye Slavens. Hi. Ian Snyderman. Hi. 
Great. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you.